actually, I mean, we've been on for a while. I never got to the topic. I really want to talk to you about. Um, I feel like you'd be very good. First of all, I genuinely think the kind of ideas you have, you'd make for a great recurring guest overall, guest to a podcast overall. I don't know how many podcasts you've done because you have a solid range, uh, philosophically, psychologically. You speak about startups and business and like all of this stuff. And so I thought like a good intersection of this might be to some degree what your thoughts on AI are. Okay. Given the current state of affairs, bring me up to speed. Where are we at? Um, and how do I think about it in terms of comparing it to myself? So on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things to say about it. Uh, of course, everyone has used ChatGPT. I'm hoping by now. Sure. Uh, I mean, the way to think about AI is, um, I mean, it, it starts, it, it's a model of the data you throw into it. Uh, and what I mean is that if you throw, and most current LLMs are trained on uh, the entire web, essentially. So in that sense, you can think of an LLM as a, uh, as a mixture of just- Everything the on the internet. Yeah, hmm. so uh, the more, so with data, you have to think in terms of data distribution, which means what kind of scenarios does that data cover. And uh, the more scenarios the your data covers and the more deeply it covers, your AI will be very good at those things. Hmm. Um, so for example, a um, lot of these new models like O1 and O3 uh, of open AI reasoning models, uh, they are good with math problems um, because they are trained on tons of data around math. And a um, lot of these problems have a right and wrong answer. So what they end up doing is they end up generating a through previously trained models, they end up generating a lot of potential solutions. And the solution that turn out to be right, they include in the data, and the ones that are wrong, they exclude in the data. Um, and similarly, not just for, let's say, LLMs, even image models like stable diffusion, uh, the kinds of data you throw into it is the kinds of images that they end up producing. That's why historically, um, these models were very bad at uh, even producing five fingers. Uh, this why? Uh, because it required like very precise, um, for example, uh, if early models, if you ask them to produce image of someone from the behind, they would end up producing uh, um, head. Um, oh, Voldemort. Yeah. Like the Voldemort yeah, complex. Because huh? more images have face uh, than the back. And similarly, Achha. hands were not very good because most images of people are just torso without fingers. So... When you lack that data, the model will do anything. So the more and more progress in AI has been, the way to think about AI is less about the models and more about the data we have hmm. in the current paradigm. Uh, which means uh, it'll end up doing things where you have a ton of data. And all the current foundation uh, companies are on a mission to just get more data. more data and wider data and deeper data. So effectively you're saying that which is the processing part. And the amount of money you have, depending on how the mixi mixes, on the outside you'll produce results. Yeah. And in whichever sector you have more data, the results will be finer in that sector. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so all this, this processing, this algorithm, this reasoning model is trained on the entire internet. Yeah. So not only is it just that the entire internet ka textual data is being processed, but the biases in that data are probably also sticking in. Yeah. Like for instance, I'm giving an example. So Comical like example. if you, for example, ask ChatGPT, uh, who is more likely to be a nurse? It'll just say a woman. Because that that's where that's mm -hmm. what the internet is. So it's it doesn't have a bias of its own. The bias is not in the air. Uh, bias is in the data. Right. And I don't even know whether it's a bias. It's just m the way to think about AI. It's just like a compression of the data you put in. Just like you do like gzip. Uh, it just makes the whole data, it's a smaller file. Uh -huh. Similar way you should think about it. It just outputs the data, it's ingested. Could you say at that point that it is doing anything close to thinking? I mean, it depends how you define thinking. Uh, thinking is just like a word. Audio? No, so, sorry, I'll ask this question again. Do you think at that point... I mean, what's thinking for you? How do you define it? Well... That's a very good question, but I'm assuming... Okay, let me reframe this. L l let's fragment it. Do you think at this point, any of these reasoning models, LLMs, are capable of creative thought? Uh, again, we get into this question of what's 
creative. Hmm. Uh, uh. So is the way to think about it, I mean, in technical terms, what's it's called as interpolation versus ex- uh, extrapolation. Hmm. Uh, what interpolation means, let's say I have seen two data points. Uh, and if I get a new problem that's somewhere in between it, uh, let's say you have to predict uh, prices of a house uh, given like in, in an area. If you have, if you know the price of the house in one corner and you know the price of a house in another corner of the same locality, you can somehow average them and say for a new house, it'll be like probably this. That's interpolation where the training data is the two prices of houses, you know, and the new price is the, like the new data point that you want to predict on. That's interpolation. But Mm. let's say you only have data for one locality and I ask you to give a price for a house in New York. Uh, in the current paradigm, you won't be able to do that. And that requires extrapolation. And the mm. way humans do it, we don't just, let's say, do this averaging out of two prices. We build a world model of, let's say, what drives prices. Mm. We'll start thinking about prices that are driven by scarcity, location, metro access, so on and so forth. And you will do some purchasing power parity adjustments. And you'll get to a reasonable adjustment because you have the model of the world, a right. formula for how things happen, how prices are determined. So in that sense, current LLMs are very good with interpolation. Let's say if you if you throw them a new problem and it's within the vicinity of the problems they've seen, they'll be great at it. But if you throw them a completely new problem in the data set, uh, then they can't. Okay. They so don't have an internal model, a very cohesive one. So maybe this is a good, good place to um, sort of take the boundary, right? For instance, if somebody has to solve cancer. Yeah. That's a problem in the vicinity of few other problems, if, if any. Like, it's a, it's a rare problem. We don't know how to solve it. Um, there's not, it's not interpolatable in a certain way. Yeah. There might be some threads that come from research in virus killing elsewhere. Right? Or whatever. This cancer solving is a problem I expect humans to solve. And let's go back three, four years to make it simple. Say we're in 2020. OpenAI has not launched at GPT-3. Yeah. Somebody says, Prakar, who do you think will solve cancer? I will say scientists will solve cancer yeah. because, you know, that's an original thought. They will be able to produce an idea around it, test it, so on and so forth. Now, do you think LLMs as they stand today are able to do something of that nature or no? Um, so, I mean, you have to think about how humans solve it. So, hmm. the, how human scientists would solve it, let's say if I am trying to solve uh, A, I mean, there's no such thing as solving a cancer. It's a million diseases. But let's just assume... Cancer is just one big thing, but sure. uh, if you want to solve it, you'll have a model of, let's say, how biology works. You'll have like an understanding of how genes get expressed and what gets uh, what gets like knocked off in cancerous cells and how does immune system. So you'll have like a very rich understanding of how actual reality works. Hmm. And within that reality, you'll try to do, let's say, mental simulations to come up with hypothesis that if I do this thing differently, maybe this will behave differently and so on. And then based on those hypotheses, you'll go ahead and do experiments and collect feedback and iterate. Hmm. Uh, If you just have an LLM, it's not capable of doing any of it uh, as of now. But LLMs as um, an input to a larger system Hmm. is probably capable of getting there. Would you say in that case, the LLM is the language language center of... So I append the LLM... So LLMs are very great at... um, uh, producing, like the way to think about LLMs are that they are great knowledge sources. Hmm. So you can query them anything and they have, because it's almost like you have an instant Google that you can pose any question to and get a sense of. So for example, you can ask whether uh, X gene behaves in a certain way in a cancerous cell or not. That fact, uh, if it's trained on enough scientific data, is more likely to be right and wrong. But you can't just tell cancer, tell tell LLM, you know, you should solve cancer and do it because it will just interpolate and it will probably just mix a uh, bunch of a different few ideas. articles and research papers it's read and interpolate somewhere in between. That's why most uh, answers by LLM on complex queries is underwhelming. It's sort of like reading a random web article. Is it true that LLMs but are... But people are changing that. People are changing that by just using LLMs as one part of the system. Hmm. Um, and they're appending other yeah for example could you add search to it for example could you have uh, 
an LLM output an experiment that probably a real scientist can do and give feedback so that even LLM's understanding becomes better over a period of time. Could I attach a cybernetic suit to it and allow it some motor yeah, functionality? But, but I feel there are fundamentals um, that we still require some fundamental breakthroughs before we can have AIs who think as well as humans. And the way, I mean, the way to think about this, I mean, this is called artificial general intelligence. Yeah. And the current paradigm really is I'll train on tons of data and I'll test on uh, problems which are very similar to data. Sure. So open AI is, let's say, reasoning models perform really well on math and coding problems because they've trained on tons of math and coding problems. Uh, but to me, AI needs to be, can I solve problems in a domain that I've never seen before? Right. Or can I behave in an intelligent way in an environment I've never seen before? Right. And not whether can I perform really well on things I've just seen tons of. Right. So current LN is more closer to algorithms and databases that you can query. Right. And not like something you can put in novel situation and expect them to behave. So it's not an independent thinking machine yet? No. No. And so... It is dependent, one, on the data, two, on the query, very heavily, yeah, two yeah. sort of function. And so, yeah. uh, on one end, there is historical human contribution. On this end, there is present human contribution, and only then can it probably find yeah. its way, right? Yeah. And so, how far do you think are we from something that is an independent agent thinking machine? Yeah, I mean, predicting fundamental breakthroughs is always impossible. Uh, you, we don't know. Yeah. And so, it would be five years or 50 years? Yeah, yeah, it could be. Maybe more. Maybe more. Yeah. But I mean, all the incentives are towards getting it. Uh, there's a lot of investment. And if you do it, you unlock a lot of economic growth. Yeah. So people are highly incentivized for it. But of course, if you knew how to do it, you would do it. And if you don't know how to do it, how could you predict when it will happen? Before this OpenAI um, blitzkrieg, there was a moment, I mean, this was myth. This was lore. People would say this very casually in conversation. There once, like, I think Google or Facebook set two AIs to talk to each other. Yeah. And very quickly, they realized English is not efficient enough for them to talk in. And so they started talking in code, at which point mm -hmm. they switched it off. Can you check this, if this is true? Yeah, I mean, there's more, more hype in these stories generally than what happens. But it yeah. makes sense, right? Right. It why might would, be the why case. Why would two machines talk uh, in the same language as two humans who evolved in a very different context. And I also you can give different goals to machine. Right. Guys, if you listen to this, you will feel like, wow, I also want to think like this. I want to learn like this. So, what do you want to do? Subscribe. Subscribe button. Subscribe.